SwiftUI lets us show an alert when an optional value changes, but this isn't quite so straightforward when working with optional strings, as you'll see. To demonstrate this, we're going to rewrite the way our resort facilities are shown. Right now we have a plain text view made like this. We're going to replace that with icons to represent each facility. And when the user taps on one, we'll show an alert with a description of that facility. As usual, we're going to start small and work our way up. First, we need a way to convert facility names like accommodation into an icon that can be displayed. Although this will only happen in resort view right now, this functionality is exactly the kind of thing that should be available elsewhere in our project. So we're going to create a new struct to hold this information for us. Create a new Swift file called facility.swift, replace its foundation import with SwiftUI, and give it this code. Struct facility, static func icon for facility string, return some view. Let icons equals a dictionary of accommodation, house, beginners, one dot circle, cross country, map, eco friendly, leaf dot arrow dot circle path, and family person dot three. And then after that we'll say if let icon name equals icons facility, let image equals image, system name our icon name, accessibility label, text facility, foreground color, secondary, and return image. Else, fatal error, unknown facility type facility. As you can see, that has a single static method that accepts a facility name, looks up in a dictionary, and returns a new image we can use for that facility. I picked out various SF symbols icons that work well for the facilities we have, and I also used an accessibility label modifier for the image to make sure it works well in VoiceOver. We can now drop that facilities view into resort view by replacing this code with this. hstack for each resort.facilities id.self facility in. Facility.icon for facility dot font dot title. That loops over each item in the facilities array, converting it to an icon and placing it into a hstack. I use the font dot title modifier to make the images larger. Using the modifier here rather than inside facility allows us more flexibility if we want to use these icons in other places. That was the easy part. The harder part comes next. We want to add an on tap gesture modifier to those facility images, so we can show an alert when they're tapped. Using the optional form of alert, this starts easily enough. Add a new property to resort view to store the currently selected facility name. At state, private var, selected facility, optional string. Now add this modifier to the facility icons just below dot font dot title. On tap gesture, self dot selected facility equals facility. We can create the alert in a very similar manner as we made the icons, by adding a static method to the facility struct that looks at the name in a dictionary. Static func alert for facility string returns alert. Let messages equals dictionary of accommodation. This resort has popular on site accommodation. Beginners. This resort has lots of ski schools. Cross-country, this resort has many cross-country ski routes. Eco-friendly, this resort has won an award for environmental friendliness. And family, this resort is popular with families. And then after that we'll say if let message equals messages facility, return alert title text facility, message, text, message. Else, fatal error, unknown facility type, facility. And now we can just add an alert item modifier to the scroll view in resort view, showing the correct alert whenever selected facility has a value. Alert, item, dollar selected facility, facility in, facility.alert for facility. Now if you try building that code, you'll be disappointed, because it doesn't work. 
You see, we can't just bind any at state property to the alert item modifier. It needs to be something that conforms to the identifiable protocol. The reason for this is subtle but important. If we set selected facility to some string, an alert should appear. But if we then change it to a different string, SwiftUI needs to be able to see the value changed. Strings don't conform to identifiable, which is why we have to use for each resort facilities ID self when looping over facilities. There are two ways to fix this, one that probably seems dubious at first, but on reflection actually makes a lot of sense, and one that's more work, but a bit less invasive. The first solution is to make strings conform to identifiable, so we no longer have to use id backslash dot self everywhere. This can be done with a tiny extension placed in any of the files in your project. Extension string, identifiable, public var id string is self. With that, our code now builds, and in fact, you can change the aforementioned for each to this. I can just remove id self. If you run the app now, you'll see it all works correctly, and tapping any of the icons also shows an alert. Even better, we can now use strings natively anywhere that previously required us to use id self. This simplifies quite a bit in Swift UI, and if you ever do plan to use strings for situations, you have no choice but to use id self regardless, so the solution is exactly what you want. However, one small thing does sit uncomfortably with me, which is this. It makes it a little too easy to use strings for identifiers, when often something like a UUID or an integer might work better. If this also sits uncomfortably with you, I want to explore what a solution looks like. And honestly, I think it's a reasonable thing to do, as long as you always remember your strings must be unique. Then by all means, skip on to the next video. Still here? Okay. To fix this, we have to upgrade a few parts of our code. First, we're going to make facility itself be identifiable, which means giving it a unique ID property and also storing the facility name somewhere in there. This means we'll create an instance of facility and use its data rather than relying on static methods. So, change the facility struct to this. Conform to identifiable. Let ID equals a new UUID. Var name the string. Var icon returns some view. Then we're looking at the icons dictionary using name, user label text name, and fatal error name. And similar for alert. We'll say var alert is alert. We'll look at messages by name, use text name, and fatal error on name as well. Next, we're going to update the resort struct so it has a computed property containing its facilities as an array of facility rather than string. This means we still load the original string array from JSON, but have a facility array alternative ready to hand. Ideally, this would be done with a custom codable initializer, but I don't want to cover that all over again. So, add this property to resort now. var facility types, array facility, facilities.map, facility.init. Now in resort view, we can update our code to use an optional facility rather than an optional string. First, change the property. This will be an optional facility. Next, change the for each to use our new facility types property rather than facilities, which in turn means we can access the icon directly because we have real facilities now. So we'll say for each resort.facility types, facility in, facility.icon. And finally, we can replace the alert modifier to use the facility alert, like this, facility.alert. That's quite a bit of work, but it does now mean we can remove the custom string extension. That's quite an invasive change to make, and if Apple had meant it to be that easy, I'm sure they'd have made alert item use a more common protocol that string already conforms to, such as equatable.